you are about to listen to a Jason Burgos exclusive interview. I'm well, I'm well. I'm excited to talk to you. How's uh, how's everything with camp and everything going, setting up for this really big night you got ahead of you next week? Uh, I'm glad it's almost over. I'll tell you that much. She's <laughs> <laughs> ready to get the fight game going on again. Has it been a, a more difficult, more brutal camp than usual? It's been kind of the same stuff, just more pressure. No, no. No, no neither. <laughs> neither. Um, just, uh, I mean, it's been fun being out in Colorado, but I definitely miss the home life for a little bit. Now, you have had a super solid career in the sport, but you entered the tournament on a two-fight losing skid, having lost three or four. However, two of those losses were two of the best World Series of Fighting slash PFL has to offer. Lance Palmer, Andre Harrison. Yet you turned many heads with your number one seed earning performance in the in the season. Did anything change for you when the season started, or is the sport simply about a matter of inches, and sometimes you get the break and sometimes you, you don't? Um, I mean, I, to start the camp, uh, to start the season, I mean, I went out, that's when I first started coming out to Colorado and started my camps out here at Factory Edge with Mark Montoya and uh, the guys out here in Colorado. I started coming out here in, uh, I believe, May, uh, and the first fight was in June. Uh, but, yeah, so from – before the season started, I came out here to Colorado and you know started working with uh, Factory X and the team and Coach Mark, Mark, uh, Mark Montoya. What made you make the change to end go there? The fact that you know, a two-fight losing streak probably uh, wasn't a good thing and realizing there's, the training in Utah just wasn't the same as it used to be and I needed the partners, the coach, the guidance, um, everything like that. Like I just needed a change. And coming out here to Colorado and being with these guys, just I think it really has helped me out quite a bit. Can you specifically talk about, like, how has it helped you, say, in your strike? And how has it helped you in your grappling? How has it helped you in your fight IQ, your mental preparation? How different has it been? Well, my my, strike, my ground game has always been my fallback. I've always loved the ground game. So, I'm, I mean, I'm not saying it hasn't helped out here, too. But, um, you know, Mark Montoya is striking is amazing and we, I had, this is the first time my career I've actually been hit mitts and uh, we're drilling a lot more with the stand-up and technique uh, so I feel like my stand-up I mean couldn't probably see the first fight but the second fight I feel like it's improved quite a bit and uh, mm. just the just having the coach in the corner uh, I haven't had that for a while I've been working with like teammates and we just have like me core or my buddy Brock or one of us like corner each other mm -hmm. and now actually having a coach and someone that just his demeanor in the corner it just I mean, it's calm, but also, like, you kind of feel like there's an urgency as well. It's just, it just works perfect having them in the corner. Are there any people that you train with there that are, might be familiar to, to fans of the sport and, and other notable M um, promotions? Um, I mean, there's tons of guys out here. I mean, Anthony Smith's been out here. He's main event in the UFC coming mm -hmm. up. Court came, actually, came out here with me. Mm -hmm. uh, he's fighting on that same card. Uh, and I've been able to work a little bit with uh, James Krause, who's been here uh, – Ian Heinen, who's just won the Contender Series. Uh, Devontae, I worked out Devontae a ton, actually. He won his Contender Series contract. Mm -hmm. um, Brandon Wavell just won his big legacy fight. Um, I mean, there's so many top guys' names out here that and that's what kind of got me out here. Is training in Utah, I've been working with Cord Ramsey and, you know, select a handful of guys for years and years where we all know each other, where I wanted to be with, one, people my own size because, you know, Cord's huge and I'm not. Uh, I went to work with some other 45ers, 35ers, 55ers, um, and they have a bunch of them out here. So, you know, I've worked with people my own size. I've worked with some bigger guys. Um, it's just it's just a great mixture out here. Now, you mentioned that you don't feel any pressure going into this, but do you feel, I mean, th there's an expectation now. You are a number one seed. I mean, do you notice any differences since you've had such a fantastic, successful performance in the season? I mean, you have people like me that want to get your time, want to talk to you, want to know how you feel. Like, it, has there been a difference after the season now going to the playoffs? I really don't feel much of a difference. I still see, you know, I think more people are on the Lance Andre bandwagon, mm -hmm. which is cool. You know, they both have technically wins over me, um, which, you know, so be it. But, you know, I'm either way, I'm going to just do what I, I love to do, and that's fight. No matter who I'm against, uh, if it's Lance or Andre in the finals, um, I just plan on doing what I do and just getting in the cage and having fun. 
Now, how are you mentally and physically planning for the possibility of two fights in one night? Now, I know it's more like five rounds, but it's still two different opponents. You got a, a rest period in between. I, I talked to, to Carlos. I texted Carlos Silva earlier he, and asked him the rest period. He said it'll be about 30 to 45 minutes. Like, is there a thought to conserve energy a little bit in the fight? Is there, or you can't really take that risk because. It's only two rounds that first fight in the quarterfinals, and the, if there's a draw, the person who wins the first round gets the fight. Is there is there an added anxiousness, an added push going into this, this quarterfinal because there's so much on it? Is there is there a, a change in how you have to mentally and physically prepare? Um, not in my my book because the way I fight, no matter what fight, I'm trying to end it right away. Mm. As much as I love the fight game, I have fun in the cage. I hate getting tired. So I like to end the fight as soon as possible, which that's what I'm gonna try to do with both these fights. Just get in, get out, and be you know get to the finals. Is there have you have you and your your team talked about what you plan to do if you get to the semifinal fight in between? Are you just gonna you know go back and recover a little bit? Are you gonna just you know take a few minutes and then get right back into warming up and try to stay warm and not get it a little tight at all? Like has there been any you know f- planning in advance for something like that? No, I mean, I'm sure we'll we'll kind of plan that out a little bit once we get to the fight. Uh, but right now, the plan is just go in there, fight, go back, maybe get a quick snack, get warmed up again, fight again, and end that one just as quick. So I would get, I would imagine then, are you, are, and I talked to a couple, I talked to, to Kelvin Tiller, and I talked to Andre Harrison, they pretty much had a similar answer. Are you really not thinking about the possibility of who you could face next in Valiev and Almeida at all? Or, or are you a little different and you kind of have them in the back of your mind and you kind of game playing a little bit for that eventuality? Um, I mean, I'm definitely well aware of who's my next opponent or, you know, options are. I mean, I knew it was going to be tomorrow and uh, Almeida. Uh, so I'm aware of it. But, yeah, I got to worry about Nazarino. He's, he's tough. He's been around the game for a long, long time. Uh, he has a solid record. I, I know how good he is, so i got to worry about him first. Now, give me a scouting report. I'm glad you, you brought him up. Give me a scouting report on him. You know, obviously, he's a strong grappler like yourself, but there are other areas of his game. Are there other areas of his game you feel you need to watch out for? And do you plan to test yourself against his grappling, or will you let the fight play out and see where it ends up? Um, I, have the, I mean, he's fought one of my best teammates in the past, Rad Martinez, so, I, you know, I got... That was a little bit of knowledge, but that was a long time ago. And so, I mean, I'm sure he's changed leaps and bounds since that fight. But, I mean, I have the same question about Alexander Media, how good of a jiu-jitsu guy he is if I'm going to test it. And same thing I said back then is I don't care where the fight goes, I'm comfortable. So I'm going to just go and play by how I feel. And if I feel like it needs to go to the ground, I'll take it there. If I feel like, you know, I'm having a success standing up, I'll keep on doing that. Now, you, you mentioned Harrison and Palmer, and they, they're getting the more attention. You fought both of them, and I, I talked to Harrison yesterday. He, he was very uh, complimentary of you and, and how tough a fighter you are. Is there a part of you that hopes you see Harrison or Palmer in the finals so you get not only that chance at a million, but a chance at redemption, just like a, a perfect dream scenario? Um, No, it really doesn't matter. I mean, I can't say I'm not planning on seeing at least one of the two in the finals just because I know how good they are. Uh, they're both you know, very tough guys, so I don't see any way at least one of them doesn't meet me in the finals. But, I mean, there's a lot of the guys, you know, Popo's are really tough and Toga's tough, so, I mean, it really could be anybody in the finals. And the biggest thing is, yeah, redemption would be cool, but that million dollars is going to be way better. Now, I was going to ask about, because you had a rough 2014, you lost a few fights, but since then you've been 8-3. and three. Now, you did make the change recently. Do you feel like now with this change in gym, you've been there for a while now, you've been through two camps with them now, you're going to your third camp. Do you feel like the PFL is getting the best version of Steven, Steven Seiler that is blooming at the right perfect time in his career? I really do. I really, really do. I feel... I mean, there was, like you said, I went through that rough patch where, you know, I, I just wasn't, my well, answer, I wasn't very hungry, but I was, my focus was, I believe, elsewhere and not into really fighting. I was more going through the motions where now, you know, and I think it's because I do have to come out here to Colorado away from my comfort zone, comfort zone. I'm away from my family. I'm away from just everything I'm comfortable with. I'm out here and by myself for the most part. Uh, just training and doing everything where I have to focus a lot more 
on training and on fight and everything else where I feel more ready nowadays for sure. Do you, you mentioned that your focus wasn't on where it should be not long ago. Do you, what, was there a change in life? I mean, what was your focus on the time? Do you, you feel yeah. there was a maturity? My... <laughs> yeah, no, could you say what you're going to say? First off, in 2014, that's when I had my first kid. <laughs> uh, and I hate to say it, I mean, that maybe maybe was a downfall in my UFC when I had my first career because my first kid because my fight my focus wasn't on fighting. I was more I took days off from the gym because I wanted to be with my son, mm. and I still do want to do that to this day. I have my son and a daughter now, but my focus got, got away from fighting. Where now I know how important fighting is, especially with a million dollars on the line. Uh, that's going to be life changing. And so now I'm going to be doing that for my family where back then, you know, I think I took fighting for granted and just, I'm always going to be good no matter what I do. I don't need to go to the gym today and, you know, spend more time with the family. Now I'm making more sacrifices and as much as, as tough as they are at the time they are, like it's, it is hard sacrifice and everything. I know it's going to be worth it then. How has there been a change in like your family dynamic that, you can make that sacrifice? Like, I don't know if you're married or not, you're your kid's mother. Like, how can you, are you able to make those sacrifices now that you weren't able before? Is, is it a job thing? Is it they're working too? Is it a better financial situation? Are some of those the elements that helped you so you can go to Colorado now and even become a better fighter? Yeah, it's because I have a wife that's superwoman. <laughs> she literally <laughs> does. She's working two jobs. She's taking wow. care of the kids by herself. She probably does it better without me there. <laughs> because I sidetracked the kids in the distracted where she could actually get them on a schedule and do everything. She's probably doing better without me than with me. I probably just make things a little bit worse. But yeah. uh, the fact that she's able to do everything at home without me and still maintain jobs and you know feeding the kids, taking care of everybody, taking care of herself, and uh, we have four dogs at home. She's taking care wow. of them. She's just yeah, she does it all. And so the fact that she's willing to step up and do all that for me, just so I can live this dream, uh, it's, <laughs> I appreciate it more than she knows. So suffice to say, you better win that million because you don't want to go home and say you didn't <laughs> for watch all the work she's doing. <laughs> well, she's actually out here with me right now. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, so she's able to take a week out here and come hang out with me for a week, and I was able to take the son to WWE, and actually the family all went, but we went oh, to nice. wrestling what on event Sunday. Did you go to? And, it was a live event? Just a, a house show. Yeah, it went, they had Raw last night, but I had to train. And uh, same with SmackDown today. I still got to do that that sacrifice thing with the gym. But we were able to catch Sunday, and my son was able to meet some guys, and he, he had a blast. Oh, well, who did he get to meet? Uh, Bobby Lashley came out, actually, nice. to the crowd. And uh, he literally, like, high-fived, like, every athlete. He's, he's bragging how he talked to her. He shook, shook Roman Reigns' hand again. <laughs> and he did the little uh, wolf pack sign with Finn Balor. He's... Wow. Then we went and saw the Miz today. I mean, he's in heaven right now. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> have you been able to get these kind of opportunities because of of the success and in, in being in the PFL? Uh, nope, just all luck, luck. <laughs> <laughs> I've you know I've been able to be at the right place at the right time. I mean, I wish PFL hooked it up, but uh, mm. this is all just uh, lucky right now. All right. Now, last question. I appreciate the time. Now, the quarterfinals. The person who loses in the quarterfinals gets fifty thousand. Now, the person gets and who loses in the semifinals gets a hundred thousand, and then two hundred thousand for the runner up, and then we know the million dollars. Now, of course, I know you're everybody knows you're gaining, you're going for that million dollars, and you believe as a fighter you have the confidence. But are is the are these amounts still some of the biggest purses you've ever had in your career? And does it make it even the effort just to get into the playoffs completely worth it? And being with the PFL worth it because you're still going to get some pretty good money even if if you have bad luck and you don't get the million dollars? Um, you know, just being with PFL in general has been amazing, actually. I mean, money's awesome, and it's been great, but they, the way they treat their athletes, the way they've taken care of me and um, treated me, it's, they're just so professional. So it's been, you know, a dream come true. I, I love being with PFL and everything about them. And I've been telling everybody, I had a great run in the UFC and a great life out there, but I don't think I've been happier with an organization than I have been when since I've been with PFL and Ray and Carlos and everybody with them. Uh, and can I give a shout out to the sponsors as well that they, they let us have? And sponsor away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the biggest one, you know, has been my, my stepdad's company actually is Atlas. Uh, they work with a lot of computers. He's actually gave me a, a house to, to stay out here in Colorado so I could, you know, be away from everybody but still have a house to stay at for free. And 
Uh, I mean, he's paying for it all. And I have a place to stay while I'm out here in training, which has been amazing. Mm-hmm. And also in Progression, who is a company I actually I do work for. I do a work at home uh, from 6 to 10 in the morning, and they do credit repair. Right. They're actually sponsoring me this fight, but they've also given me the time to, you know, leave my house and come to Colorado, train, and uh, help me out in so many ways. They also do credit repair where they help, you know, work with other people's credit to kind of help better that. So, you know, they get a fair shot, you know, uh, getting that credit cleaned up and being able to apply for things with that credit. Because once they have bad credit, it's really hard to get through things. And uh, progression has just been huge uh, working with them and how much they supported me through, through this all. How has things has been sponsorships been easier to get now that you're on, you know, on a, a major promotion that's on Facebook with millions of people, NBC? Has has things like that gotten easier? Not the first two fights, but now that the playoffs are <laughs> starting to kick up, I think it's getting a little bit more exciting. Oh. And uh, yeah, I think people are going to, uh, you know, really, really liking the getting into it now that's been the season's over and now it's playoff time. Just like football, people get excited for football, but, you know, it really starts, you know, getting excited once the playoff time comes. 